Lesson 5. Organization is the key. Today we're going to talk about text structures, only just really going to focus on one today, but I'm going to pre preview the other five. And I want you to think of text structure as a house, because in a, an article, you can have more than one text structure. So think of the, the house and how it's built, and what keeps this house together is the framing, the windows, the door. But think about each one of those windows is a certain text structure. So you can have one that's a description in a text. You can, in the same text, you can have a compare and contrast, a problem and solution. And when we talk about text structures, I want you to always think that is how we are going to read it, is by looking at that whole picture, that whole house of, to help us find what the text structures are. So readers of a nonfiction understand that one of the biggest keys of unlocking discovered in newly information is by looking at how the writer organizes the text. Are they setting up this text to show you a problem and how they're going to solve it? Are they just describing something and using details? Um, are they comparing something and contrasting it? So look at that text structure, see how that, or how that house, that text structure house and how they're organizing and building that article and what information they're providing. And you can see that what type of text structure they're using. Again, many types of articles are gonna have more than one text structure. So some of the five nonfiction text structures are descriptive, compare and contrast, a cause and effect, sequential, and problem and solution. But if within those text structures, they're going to have lots of clue words to help you find what type of text structure it is. In description, there's going to be, for example, in addition, compare and contrast is going to have like unlike, alike, similar, both, however. In a cause and effect, you're going to see as a result, therefore, because of, due to, in sequential, you're going to hear those first, second, then, next, after that, finally. In problem solution, you're going to see very similar to cause and effect. They have a lot of the similarities in that. That because of, consequently, therefore, leads to. So be careful because problem and solution and cause and effect can be very similar. So it could be very tricky. So again, the five text structures we're going to see is description, sequential, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem and solution. In sequential, you can also hear chronological. They have two different names, se sequencing, sequential, chronological. And remember we talked about the timelines, that text feature, and you're going to find that lots of times in sequential. So again... Description is going to have such as, to begin with, for example, characteristics, chronological or sequential is going to have finally, soon, before, after, next, first, second. Comparison, same as, alike, as well as, both, instead of, either, or. Problem, solution, question is, there's a dilemma. Solving this, one answer to this problem is... And a cause and effect, so, because, since, therefore, if, as a result of. These are, again, these clue signal words that help us find what text structure we're looking for. When we're analyzing nonfiction text structure, we first want to do what we talked about these past two days, skimming and scanning and previewing the text. Then looking at all those important text features. Those are so important to look at. And finally, looking at how it's organized, how the chapters are divided. Is there a timeline? Are they describing something in details? Important language and vocabulary, the topic sentence, those signal words that we're looking for. Uh, maybe sometimes those text features are going to help you collect and understand information. Um, what kind of purpose is the author writing this for? Is it entertaining you? Is it informing you? Is it trying to persuade you? And all of this can help us find what kind of text structure the author is using. Text structure is a tool that really is so cool. It helps us understand information that's at hand. 
So while you read, think what can it be? Look for a clue the author gives you. Text structure is key. Comparing and contrasting, a reader should be asking how two things are the same or differences they claim. Words you can cite are also alike. The little word two should give you a clue. Two things are alike. There's problem and solution, and here's a slight confusion. It has another name. Cause effect can be the same. Find the word so. If then also, because of the key, it's cool. You agree? Think why it's so. Sequencing's one you've heard. What's first, second, and third? It may include a date. Like 1998, find the word next. Is that in the text? It's about time you call it a line. Sequencing is best. Description or a list is information with important facts that give you more than just a gist. For example, is a phrase that will tell. Facts will follow and make learning flow if author does well. Text structure is a tool that really is so cool. It helps us understand information that's at hand. Text structure is a tool that really is so cool. It helps us understand information that's at hand. So while you read, think what can it be? Look for a clue the author gives you. Text structure is key. Our first type of uh, nonfiction text structure is called description. And this is the one that we'll be focusing on for this week, for a couple of days. And this is a text that has a definite main idea or topic and provides specific details and examples about the topic or idea. It's describing something. That's where we're getting the word description. So, in the text that we're going to be looking at, I want you to ask yourself, is this piece of writing describing something? And the type of graphic organizer we use for description is a kind of like a web. The topic goes in the middle, and then it branches off, and each branch is a detail that describes the topic. But in sometimes... Um, a multi-paragraph descriptive par passages, each paragraph describes a different aspect of the topic. So we might have soccer in the middle and then descriptive detail that's describing paragraph one. What's the overall description of paragraph one? And what's the overall descriptive detail for paragraph two and then three? So soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Millions of people play soccer. It is a fairly simple game to learn. Players try to move the ball down the field and kick it to their, to their goal. However, a goalie stands in front of the goal and tries to block any shot the other team makes. If a team gets the ball in the goal, they score one point. Players need to know the rules. You're not allowed to touch the ball with your hands unless you are the goalie, or you're throwing the ball on the field from the sideline. You're also not allowed to tackle other players. The referee watches to make sure each player follows the rules. To play soccer, you need just a few items. You need to have a ball, a large area of grass, and goals. Many players wear special shoes called cleats. These shoes have points on the bottom and to help players run without slipping. Each player also wear shin guards. These protect a player's legs from getting kicked. So, what makes this piece have a descriptive structure? Well, in paragraph one, it's describing how the game is played. Soccer is their topic. Paragraph one is describing how soccer is played. Paragraph two describes the rules of the game. Paragraph three is describing the clothing and equipment. So actually we could make another type of web and just describe how the game is played. So how soccer is played could be our topic and then we could have all these details describing that. So this can go on for some time. 
Another type of um, description paragraph was about a theme park. So let's listen to this one. And in this one, I'm giving you the clue words. Have you ever been to a theme park? Well, if you have not, let me share with you some things you might encounter while you are there. For example, the treats and snacks are divine. The sweet smell of cotton candy wafting through the air is irresistible and the salty soft pretzels are to die for. Also, the sounds of shrieks and mixed with laughter coming from the roller coasters brings a smile to your heart. The excitement you feel as you wait your turn in line is indescribable. The blinking shiny lights of the games and rides draw you in like a moth to a flame. There is nothing quite like a day at a theme park. It will create lasting memories of happiness and thrill. All those words in red are those clues that are telling us that we're using a descriptive text structure. So I have my web and I'm describing a theme park. That's what my text was, description. So what are the things that they're describing in a theme park? Well, there's cotton candy there. There are bright signs, lots of screaming and laughter. There are balloons. There are yummy pretzels and snacks and food, and it creates a feeling of happiness when you go there. Some of the key words that were found in the text were, for example, specifically, particularly, characteristics, sounds like, tastes like, feels like, smells like, and for instance. These are some clue words that can help us find with descriptive. And with description, you're using those five senses also to help describe something. So in description, we're using those five W's and the H. Um, we're looking for those features, those examples, those characteristics. Something that sounds like, feels like, tastes like, using features and characteristics, those adjectives, those descriptive words, those sensory adjectives. And here's a poem that I'd like to share with you on description. Descriptive texts are focused with many details to support. They describe a certain topic just like a factual report. Listing all the features and characteristics found, authors describe a specific subject, person, place, or thing, a noun. If you want to explore a topic, descriptive texts will, give your, will be your guide. Observe and report your findings like researchers do worldwide. What does the topic look like? What do my senses tell? What does the object sound like? Taste, feel, and smell. Fill your description with examples, compile facts into lists, connect details using fact webs, use graphic organizers to assist. Be sure to examine all the pieces, find the details that are key, research all the different parts to investigate and see. What are the characteristics? What details can I find? How can I describe this topic? What parts are undefined? So keep your keen eyes open when studying nonfiction. If a topic is investigated, you are looking at description.